Hello. My name is uh, G.S. Raju. I'm on faculty at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. I would like to share with you about our work on endoscopic mucosal resection as an alternative to surgery in patients with complex colon polyps. Uh, this paper uh, will be published in GI endoscopy. So let me take you through a little bit of a background about this paper. And uh, uh, way back, about 15 years ago, when I saw a patient who had a polyp that was partially resected, and uh, he came to see us and wanted us to remove it. At that time, when I talked to him about potential risks involved with removal of such polyps, uh, he was a little bit frightened because at that time we did not have ways and means of uh, closing perforations if they were to happen, and uh, we didn't have ways and means of effectively controlling any bleed uh, if it were to happen. So because of that reason, uh, my patient was uh, uncomfortable and wanted to have surgery instead of uh, going for endoscopic resection. I worked at that time very closely with my colleague, uh, Guillermo Gomez, at the University of Texas Medical Branch, Galveston. And uh, he used to tell me that why not take them out with the scope because these polyps are small polyps and uh, we are offering a big surgery for a small polyp. So we started our journey. The first question was, could we manage the complications well uh, through the scope, i.e., could we close perforations and could we control bleeding? So from 2003 or four till 2009, uh, we did a lot of uh, experimental work uh, studying how to close different types of perforations in uh, animal work and we felt comfortable that we could close perforations well, create a leak-proof seal, and avoid peritonitis. So this experience has helped us move forwards to helping these patients with large polyps, complex polyps that could be removed with the scope. The next step was uh, I had the distinct uh, pleasure of uh, working with my colleague, uh, Roy Sitikno, who was uh, on faculty at Stanford at that time. Uh, Roy used to go to Japan and work with some of the best experts in Japan who were doing endoscopic uh, resections and endoscopic submucosal dissection to remove polyps. So when Roy came back uh, after each trip, he used to share with me uh, some of the lessons that he learned. And uh, in fact, he became my uh, private uh, tutor, I should say. And uh, we s soon started exchanging videos on how uh, we were doing, especially when we did a resection. I used to share my video with Roy, and whenever he did a case, uh, he used to share that video with me. So over a period of time, we started resecting 10 to 20 millimeter polyps, and then we started extending our limits to larger lesions. In uh, 2009, uh, I came to the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center, and uh, I decided that I would like to focus my attention on managing patients with complex polyps, complex colon polyps. So uh, we, we set up the process, and uh, this, is, uh, uh, this uh, involves uh, input from several different people, and I'm very lucky uh, to share with you that uh, my colleagues at Anderson, uh, right from the people in the business office who are able to uh, interact with the patients and bring them to the clinic, and uh, so that I could spend time in the clinic and explain to the patients about the procedure, uh, usually about an hour uh, to explain to them what was involved, and then uh, take them to the endoscopy unit for procedures. I was very fortunate to have uh, a lot of my endoscopy assistants who became passionate about endoscopic resection, and uh, along with me, they also developed their skill sets so that we could actually take care of these patients uh, safely 
and also resect their polyps completely. Uh, fortunately, we have done very well. Uh, in the last uh, uh, five years, we have looked at our data. Uh, over 205 patients, uh, 203 patients were referred to our center. Uh, every patient that was referred to our center was included in the study. And it's interesting to note that uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, further advance needs to be made in terms of education about how to study a polyp. Uh, there were a few patients where we felt that although the referring endoscopist uh, uh, thought the polyp was benign you know, based on biopsies and sometimes snare resections, when we started studying the polyp before we resected, we felt that it was truly a cancer and that could not be resected. So we identified some patients uh, that were not suitable for this procedure and we sent them straight to surgery. Uh, there were about uh, probably about 20 to 25 percent of patients where we felt that it is not safe to completely resect the polyp or where we felt that we may not be able to completely uh, resect it uh, without leaving a residue of polyp. In those cases, incomplete resection or unsafe resection, uh, we decided to send them for surgery. So that left about 75% of patients where we were successful in removing these polyps. Our goal was to not only completely resect and have a very nice clean base, we also wanted to prevent any complications. And as part of my practice, we started using clips routinely to close these defects wherever possible and uh, monitor them very closely. And all these patients had a follow-up at six months and again at uh, 18 months. And we are pleased to note that the recurrence rate is fairly low, about 5%. And uh, we are still following them for long term to see how well they do. Uh, overall, it was uh, a fantastic uh, journey um, with lots of lessons learned along the way and lots of people to thank for making this uh, uh, paper come uh, to fruition. Uh, I would like to specifically thank all my endoscopy technicians who helped me with these uh, complex cases, uh, working those late hours. And uh, I also want to thank my colleagues, uh, my colleagues who referred patients uh, to help me do this job. Uh, finally, I would like to uh, share with you that this uh, research project was funded by the John Strohlein uh, Distinguished uh, Professorship. Thank you.